That's right, folks. C for comedy, A for Abbott, M for Maxwell, E for Ennis, L for Lou Costello. Put them all together and they spell camel. Experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking camels than ever before. And draw up a chair for tonight's camel show, starring Bud Abbott and Luke Costello. Yeah. The Indians won. The Indians <laughs> Costello, all week I've been trying to find you. I telephoned your house Monday night, and they told me that you were taking a bath. Yeah. What? Monday night? Yes. Brother, did you have the wrong number? What do you mean? I had to go to the hospital for three days, Abbott, while Lana Turner was being vaccinated. Uh, now, if Lana Turner was being vaccinated, why did you have to go to the hospital? She's tattooed on my arm. I... <laughs> hey, you know my Aunt May was in the hospital too, Abbott? She had her tonsils taken out, and they sewed up her throat with telephone wire. Uh, is she all right? Yeah, only now her conversation is limited to five minutes. <laughs> yeah, I saw that beautiful blonde nurse I met the time I had that advanced fracture. Advanced fracture? How does it happen? I made an advance, and she fractured me. <laughs> but boy, was she a wonderful girl. Every time she put her arms around me, I turned to Patty. Uh, you mean Putty? I mean Patty. That's her sister. She'll kiss anybody. Oh. <laughs> Is that a telegram in your pocket, Costello? Oh, yes, Abbott, it's for you. I opened it by mistake. By mistake? Yes, I thought I could read it. I... <laughs> Give me that telegram. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why, it's from that rich widow, Mrs. Wetwash. Mm-hmm. She's, uh, she's inviting us to spend Washington's birthday at her Sun Valley Lodge oh. and enjoy the winter sport. Winter sport? You're That's right. where I shine, Abbott. Just give me a cold day and a hockey stick, and I'll show you something. What? A cold hockey stick. <laughs> well, you get a chance to show your ability. You know, the telegram says, Lou, uh, have entered Costello in a ski jump at Dead Man's Leap. Dead Man's Leap? Yep. That's the toughest ski jump in the world. I ain't going to do it. Yeah, you've got to do it. No. I told you. Listen, I told Mrs. Wetwash you were a great ski jumper. Abbott, the last time I tried to ski, I broke three legs. Uh, you only, you only have two legs. I know, but I landed on my Uncle Mike. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's Costello, come here. Costello, you've got to make that jump. What are you, a uh, sissy britches? A spineless jellyfish? A yellow coward? You've got two dollars. Would you like to try for four? Yeah, I'll say, no. <laughs> only, I, I think it was wonderful of Mrs. Wetwash to invite us for uh, watching his birthday. Don't yes, have it. It was. And to show my appreciation to Mrs. Wetwash, tonight I am going to tell my story of George Washington. I tell the story all by myself, and I don't need any help from you. So from now on, keep your mouth shut. All right. So why don't you go over to the plumbing shop and be a plumber's friend? Ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> You mean I... you don't want me to participate? Now, once upon a time, there was a little, little... What? What did you say? I said I'd like to participate in your narrative. You wouldn't dare. You haven't got the nerve. Now, you shut up while I tell my story about Washington. Now, wait a minute. You don't even know who chopped down the cherry tree. Oh, I do, too. Popeye did it. Popeye! Yes, when Washington's father asked George who chopped down a cherry tree, George says, Popeye did it. Now, will you let me tell my story? All right, go ahead. Well, go ahead. Go ahead and all right. Huh? Uh, go ahead and all right. All right. All right. Yes. Well, if it's all right with you, it's all right with me. Oh, man. <laughs> What did he get on his birthday? What did he get on his birthday? What did he get? He got, he got... How do I know what he got? I wasn't there. Well, he must have got something. All right, so he got a year older. All right, go ahead. Hey, will you stop interrupting? You're going to me a little bit. Sorry, and keep quiet. Now, one day George was standing by the river, and he threw a dollar across the river, two and a half miles. No, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, no, no. You're getting there, son. Wait a minute, take it easy. Nobody could throw a dollar two and a half miles. A dollar went much further in those days. All right. George Washington took a taxi cab, and he went to Philadelphia to sign the Declaration now, of Independence. Now, just a minute, Lou. You know, <laughs> there's a limit to everything. There were no taxi cabs in George Washington's is time. Is that so? That is so. Well, it says in a history book that he took a hack at the tree. Oh. <laughs> now, 
caught a cab that started a man came riding up on horseback. It was Paul Revere. Paul Revere? Yes, Paul Revere. Who'd you expect, the Lone Ranger? Wait a minute. <laughs> Who was Paul Revere? Paul Revere was the guy that hollered, The red coats are coming! The red coats are coming! The enemy are coming in their red coats! Where were their pants? They lost them at the Boston Tea Party. <laughs> Paul Revere was carrying a big, rusty gun that his father gave him. Yeah, no, 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 gun. not gun, not gun, musket, musket. Yes, it was his father's musket. All right, go ahead. George Washington chased the enemy, and they tried to cross the river, but the bridge was down. They went to another place, and the bridge was down, so the enemy started crying. Why did they cry? Because George, he caught them with the bridges down. All right. Now, 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 there was a rifle. Uh, no, 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 there was a raffle, and Georgie won a bottle of brandy wine. No, no, no just a minute, no, not the... Not the, the bottle of brandy wine, the battle of brandy wine. That's where Washington met Howe. He met who? No, not who, How? He was the English general. Who was the English general? <laughs> no, 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 you should remember this. How was the English general? How do I know who Howe was? I never met the guy. No, 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 you... How was the English general, don't you understand? I told you, I never met the guy. How could I remember how was the English general? That's right. Not what? Who? What right? Not what? How? Yeah, but give yourself me. How was the English general? Well, what's his name? Uh, what was not his name? How was his name? How do I know how was his name? Now you got it. I got what? Not what, how? Wait a minute! Let's start all over, Abbott. How was the English general? Certainly. How was the English general? I ask you first! <laughs> I know who was on first, and I know what was on second, but I don't remember how. <laughs> this is a new one on me, brother. All of a sudden, we got a guy named How. Yes, sir, I'm not talking about the... Where is How coming yes, in? When I say How is the general, I don't mean How was the general. What do you mean? I mean How was the general. Look, Abbott, when I say you're crazy, I don't mean you're crazy. What do you mean? I mean you're nuts. That never mind. What did George do after he fought well, General George Howe? Well, George got very hungry, so he went over to Rudy Fowler's place and got some candy from now, Rudy. Now, now wait a minute. Now, stop it, Chuck. This is ridiculous. Washington took candy from Rudy Valley. It says in their history book, Washington takes Valley's port. It was chocolate port with English nuts. Oh, I got out of that one. Now, Washington jumped in a rowboat and he started across the river. Do you, do you know why Washington crossed the river in a rowboat? Because row he got tired waiting for a sunset boat. All right. Now, oh, I know. Now, stop interrupting me, Abbott. Now, George Washington made his famous speech of the day. He said, I have only one life to give. For my country. Oh, wait a minute. George Washington did not say that. That was Nathan Hale. Who? Hale said it. Hale, Hale. Hale, you say? Yes, yes. Let's tell it. You want to tell the story of George Washington. Why didn't you start where he met General Burgoyne? Yes, I should have. What was that? If you were going to tell the story, begin with uh, Burgoyne. Begin with Burgoyne. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, when they begin the Burgoyne. Oh, no, that I can't imagine. The Burgoyne, the beginning of Burgoyne. When they begin the Burgoyne. Experience is the best teacher. It was not so long ago. All right. Stay in line, please. What's that, lady? I said, what line is this, officer? Why, this is the cigarettes, lady. <laughs> yeah, you stand in line to get what you didn't ask for. Now, don't complain, brother. You might not get anything. <laughs> That's right. Well, I've tried them all during this shortage, and boy, it sold me more than ever on my own brand. But try and get that. The camel, you know. Yeah, I feel the same way. If I can ever again get all the camels I want... Yes, experience is the best teacher. During the wartime cigarette shortage, the experience of smoking whatever brands they could get taught millions the differences in cigarette quality. It was then that smokers' T-zones, that T for taste and T for throat, tested more different brands than they'd normally try in a lifetime. That's how millions of smokers found that Camel's rich flavor and cool mildness suited them best. The result? Today, more people smoke Camel's than ever before. Experience is the best teacher. Try a Camel. <laughs> Time to light up a camel and listen to Skinny Anna sing, So Would I. Why do the stars adore you? Oh, they then lonesome for you. Let's give you the sky. By the way, so would I. Think how the rain drops miss you. Let's hurry down to kiss you. 
and hopeful sigh By the way, so would I I saw a rose Try to imitate your smile And you could have heard my heart For a country man The wise old owl is seeming he overheard you dreaming, and what he won't try when I lose, do or die. And by the way, so would I. Sun Valley, isn't it beautiful? Just look at that snow. I can hardly wait to play in it. Abbott, that snow is 14 feet deep. No, I don't care. I'm going to play in it anyway. Go ahead and play, Abbott. I'll dig you later. <laughs> hey, Castella, here comes Mrs. Wetwash with her dog sled to pick us up. Rush over and give her a great big kiss. Okay. Well, well, Mrs. Wetwash, I wouldn't have known you in that raccoon coat. My, but your nose is cold. Costello, you're kissing my lead dog. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now I'll kiss you. Well, back to the lead dog. Can't tell when you behave yourself. Uh, Mrs. Wetwash, did the rest of the gang get out here yet? Oh, yes, they're all up at the lodge. Jump in, boys, and we'll join them. Uh, Costello, are you ready? Oh, yes. Well, then, let's march. Let's what? March! March! Mrs. Wetwash, you don't even appeal to me. <laughs> That was a cold ride in that dog sled, Abbott. I think I'm frostbitten. How can you tell frostbite? You can't feel the parts that are frozen. Hmm. I can't feel my ear. Hmm. I can't feel my nose. Abbott, do you mind if I sit down? You are sitting down. Must be colder than I thought. <laughs> well, hiya, fellas. Hiya, Kitty. <laughs> Why aren't you out skiing? Well, I'm having a little trouble with my skis. Can't get my pants on over. <laughs> Hey, Costello, I brought along a ski suit for you. Ski suit? That's nothing but an old-fashioned suit of long underwear. Well, if the ski jump is too high, I can always back out. <laughs> hey, look, Costello. There's that college girlfriend of yours. Hello there, Mr. Albert. And you too, Mr. Costello. <laughs> you fuck, little man. Well, well, I'm certainly surprised to see you up here. Oh, I love it here at Sun Bowley's. Isn't it entrancing here in Idaho? Idaho? <laughs> oh, Abbott, you know where Idaho is. It's right next to Montuna and Kularutu. <laughs> I came up for the bold pleading. Don't you just adore bold pleading? No, I'd rather go tabooning in the snoo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll see you at the ski jump. As we say in French, I can say pour que ce pour qu'est-ce que c'est to you. And a greasy pork chop and a kiss to you, too. <laughs> hey, Abbott. Hey, Abbott. It's getting colder and colder. It's really getting cold. B-R-R. B-R-R. Gee, it's cold. B-R-R. Oh, B-R-R. 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 <laughs> you don't say B-R-R. B-R-R. You say... <laughs> you read the straight lines, kids. I'll tell the joke. <laughs> hey, Abbott, take a slug of this. It'll keep you warm. All right, thanks. All right. <laughs> Hey, you idiot, this is anti-freeze. What are you trying to do, poison me? No, you'll be all right. Just don't go uphill too fast or you'll boil over. <laughs> hey, look at that fellow. Here's Marilyn Maxwell. Marilyn? 
Oh, there you are, Lewis, honey. I saw you skating a while ago. You're a pretty fast skater. Yes, Marilyn. Costello is cutting uh, figure eight. Yes, and I do it the hard way. Two four. <laughs> but Lewis, honey. Lewis, honey, you fell down so many times. Didn't it spoil your fun? Marilyn, nothing spoils on ice. <laughs> You're so wonderful. Put your arms around me. Let me hold your hand. Oh, Marilyn. Your hands feel so soft. Well, don't you think they'd feel softer if you took off your mittens? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Lewis, honey, being here in the great outdoors with you has inspired me to write a poem. Oh. The thrill of a kiss, a tender caress, a memory I cherish, and a pause to refresh. What does that make you think of, honey? Coca-Cola? <laughs> well, bye-bye, Lewis. I'll see you at the ski slide. Costello, here comes Mrs. Wetwash in her skiing tights. Doesn't she have cute knees? <laughs> yes. And if I ever build a house, I'd like to have doorknobs like that. <laughs> oh, Lord, Mr. Costello, how do you like my new skis? Oh, too bad you couldn't get a pair longer than your feet. <laughs> <laughs> Mind that, Costello. Uh, why don't you and Mrs. Whitwash slide down the uh, bobsled uh, run together? Oh, huh? not me, Abbott. The last time I was on a bobsled, I had a box of matches in my back pocket. We hit a bump and they lit up. Why? Uh, was it a big fire? Oh, no. Just a flash in the pants. <laughs> oh, Mr. Costello. You just love this bobsled run. I kicked the corner so fast that my ears touched the ground. Oh, a California driver, eh? <laughs> Uh, quick stalling, Costello. You've uh, just got time to make the run before the ski jumping starts. Hurry uh, up. Come on, Costello. Now, you lie down on the sled, and I'll sit on top of you. <laughs> That's it. Now, just steer for that rise and down the other side. Okay. Abbott, give us a push. That's <laughs> <laughs> <Looks> good. <laughs> Presents lovely Marilyn Maxwell from Metro Golden Mayor, producers of Lady in the Lake. Assisted by the four hits, here's Marilyn to sing for camel fans everywhere. You broke the only heart that ever loved you. You tossed away the only love you knew. As if nothing mattered, you battered and shattered a heart so true. Only to wake up to find that the breakup was breaking the heart of you. And now you come to me for consolation. I feel foolish and fall for such a life. You broke the only heart that ever loved you. And now that I met you, I'm not going to let you bring time.
According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Yes, three leading independent research organizations asked this question of 113,597 doctors. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand name most was Camel. Everywhere, millions of smokers vote an emphatic yes to Camel's rich flavor and cool mildness. If you are not smoking Camels now, try a Camel on your T-zone. That's T for taste and T for throat. Your true proving ground for any cigarette. See if your taste isn't more than pleased with Camel's rich, full flavor of choice tobaccos. If your throat doesn't welcome Camel's cool mildness. See if you two don't say, Camel's suit my tea zone to a T. Attention, everybody. Attention, please. The big event of the day is about to take place. The ski jump from the most dangerous ski run in the world. Dead Man's Leap. Our first contestant will be Louis Costello. <laughs> Mrs. Whitwash, I ain't gonna do it. Why, you little fat coward? I'll push you. Oh, don't care, Mrs. Whitewash. I've got a gun in my pocket and I'll draw a beard on you. Uh, not beard, you mean bead. On you, a beard would look better. <laughs> Have it. I ain't gonna do it. I'm too young. I'm too beautiful to die. <laughs> Besides, I've still got 99 years to go in my ever sharp fountain pen. <laughs> Why, you blubbering nincompoop. Oh, no. You can't do this to me. I gave my word that you would make this jump. And now, now you let me down, Costello. This is the last straw. You use it, Abbott. I'll drink out of the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lewis, honey, this is your chance to be a great hero. Only one man has ever made this death-defying jump. That great Norwegian, Olaf, like a hyena. <laughs> he made it in 1903 And in 1919 a man tried it and he failed In 1927 a man tried it and he failed In 1935 a man tried it and he failed Monotonous, isn't it? <laughs> However, I'll try it for you, Merlin They don't call me Sporty Costello for nothing When it comes to sports Costello is the king I can skate and I can see And do most anything You can't always tell that flannel are so red. But when I go to bargaining, I never use a sled. <laughs> Every time he takes, he always takes alone. And no one has to help me, cause I'm always on my own. When the pond is frozen, you'll always see him play there. I love to skate on ice, because I start on the bottom and stay there. <laughs> hey, Castello, I never knew that you were so fond of winter sports. Oh, yes, well, certainly I am, Alex. I was once champion ice skater. You ever notice my posture, the way I hold my hands behind my back, with my head down and my shoulders hunched? Do you know what that's from, Abbott? Ice skating? No, from stooping down and talking to girls in taxi cabs. <laughs> I fly through the air with the greatest of ease. Each time I go skiing, I float through the breeze. Each time that I land, I slide on my knees. Someday I must try it to a ski. At sports I am clever, cause I use my brain. I may get a headache, but I won't complain. And when I play checkers, my headache gets worse. But when I'm on ice, it's vice versa. <laughs> Costello's a skater. La, 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 la. There's no one that's greater. La, 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 la. so bad yourself. Oh, you beautiful doll, you great big beautiful doll. There's no one of which I'm fonder. There's no blonde, I know that's blonder. Oh, oh, oh. you wonderful man, my lovey-dovey wonderful man. If you take with me, I'll be in paradise. Careful, Louis, dear. You're on thin ice. 
Don't you know what insurance is? Oh, yes. Insurance is what keeps a man broke all his life so he can die rich. You're so right. <laughs> uh, just sign here, Mr. Costello. That's it. Now, you have a $100,000 policy with your wife as beneficiary. But I ain't married. No? Mm. You just wait till this news leaks out. Oh. Come on. Oh. Come on, Costello. There. Now, down you go. <laughs> oh. 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 This is terrible. I shouldn't have let him do it. My poor little pal Costello. Uh, he didn't come down. I may never see him again. Hey, Emma! Costello. Costello, where are you? I'm up here on his telephone line. Get off the line, please. You are on a busy wire. Hang on, Costello. Don't let go. You'll drop 5,000 feet into that ravine. I can't hang on much longer, Abbott. What shall I do? Deposit five cents for the next three minutes, please. back in just a moment for Camel Cigarettes. During the war, the makers of Camel Cigarettes sent a total of more than 150 million free camels to our fighting men overseas. Now free camels are sent to servicemen hospitals instead. This week, the camels go to Veterans Hospital, Des Moines, Iowa, USAAF Station Hospital, Westover Field, Chicopee, Massachusetts, U.S. Naval Hospital, Dublin, Georgia, U.S. Marine Hospital, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Veterans Hospital, Wadsworth, Kansas. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States three times a week, are rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are still stationed, and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now here are Bud Abbott and Lou Costello with a final word. Well, Costello, we certainly had a lot of fun tonight with Mrs. Wetwash. Yes, you? Abbott. You know, she's my neighbor. I've got the apartment next door to her. It's 100 by 20 by 25. 100 by 20 by 25? Yes. If I don't get 100 by the 20th, I'll be out on the 25th. Oh, good night, Paul. Oh, good night. It seems to catch the eye of the ladies when a man smokes a pipe. That's one kind of pipe appeal. And then there's the pipe appeal you get from Prince Albert in your pipe. The pipe appeal that comes from rich, full-bodied flavor and cool, tongue-easy mildness. Get Prince Albert and pack your pipe with pipe appeal. Prince Albert is specially treated to ensure against tongue bite. Crim cut to burn cool and even. Don't miss Prince Albert's Grand Ole Opry Saturday night. Hear Red Foley sing favorite American folk songs. Chuckle with the Duke of Paducah and Minnie Pearl. Remember, that's Grand Ole Opry Saturday night on NBC. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking camels than ever before. C A M E L. This is Michael Roy in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night for Camel. <laughs> Stay tuned now for the Eddie Tanner Show. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs> <laughs> 